Hi, sorry for those of you who just tuned in and then got cut off. Technology and me today are doing just great. Um, just thought I'd quickly pop in and show you, the, you what the paint pours look like from the last class and just and whip up a quick tag as well. It beats doing housework. But this is just drying up beautifully. This is what I did in the previous live Facebook earlier this morning. So there's one there. And that is the second one. So you can see um, that beautiful gold sitting on top of it. So very, very nice. And that's the first one I did that I actually just added some gold to. So they are looking absolutely beautiful. So that is the boom gel. So just chat amongst yourselves while I go and dry these off. All right, sorry about that, guys. Okay, so I thought that rather than doing jobs around the house and stuff that I have zero interest in doing, um, that I would whip up a quick little tag here using some mixed media elements and a few little bits and pieces. So I'm going to just make sure that I can see everything that I need to on screen here. Um, and so, yeah, I thought I'd, I'd do something using some Lindy's Gang products, um, some stencils, some chipboard, some different mediums, and yeah, just kind of make a few little pretty things, and um, yeah, just let you guys watch. So, pour yourself a coffee, um, <laughs> just, I guess, sit down, and yeah, sorry, Kerry Ann, another Natalie May special. Um, but yeah, so I just thought I'd sit down and, and make a few things and do a few little bits and pieces, uh, and just show you some other cool things that you can do with the Lindy's Magicals. So this is a little bit of a, a mixed media tag and I've had, this is just a, an old Prima tag. It's kind of like a, a smoothish sort of cardstock. Um, what I want to do is add a few little elements to this. So I've got some of the Tim Holtz collage paper. I'm just gonna put a small amount on using gel medium. Um, I'm just going to do that. So gel medium, this is my choice of gel medium. It is the Dina Wakeley one. Uh, it is really, really easy to use. I'm using a catalyst tool to put that on with. This is a an artist's tool but it is a fantastic palette knife so I just want to pop a little bit on here uh, I don't really have too much of a plan for what I'm going to do today so um, so really sorry about that now but I figure you know how, how bad can it go um, so what I do like about this collage paper is that it is all but transparent it goes on beautifully with gel medium. Um, the gel medium works like a, a hit, like a, a sealer as well. So I'm just going to put a little bit over the top with the gel medium uh, and my palette knife. And that is all that it really needs. Um, so I wipe that off onto my paper towel. And I'm just going to smooth it over with my fingers and, and polish off any excess. This is really handy because polishing it off with your fingers thins it down, dries it off, and, and really makes sure that it takes all the bubbles out of it. Um, so just polish it off gently with your fingers. That is a little trick that I learned when I did some classes with Tim Holtz in January last year. Um, my gosh, that was such a long time ago. Um, over at in, in Phoenix so that is on and I've just dried that off with a heat gun um, tearing that down so I do love the uh, the collage paper this is six yards which is about five and a half meters uh, I have those out on special I think for about nine dollars at the moment and I have sold out of their his his new new release but there is still plenty of the 
document and typography available online. So the next thing I'm going to do, I have one of these um, stencils. So this is a Dina Wakeley stencil and this one is called Spaced Dots. Can't imagine why. Uh, and I want to add a little bit of texture and a little bit of a pattern to my background. So I'm going to use 13 Arts Gesso to do this. This is my go-to product. It was introduced to me by the incredibly awesome and talented Fiona Paltridge, uh, who had a birthday last week. Uh, and she introduced me to this stuff and I love it. You can see that it's got like a real jelly consistency. And I like that it is super crusty and white. Actually, crusty is not actually the right word. But um, Kellyanne, love the sarcasm. I'm not sarcastic, I don't know what you're talking about, darling. Um, so I'm going to use it like a, a texture paste. I'm going to spread it on like I'm putting oh, peanut butter on crumpets, which is my absolute go-to. Um, all right, so just on like that. So the reason I'm not using texture paste is because I put it away yesterday and it's not in front of me on my desk. But this works really, really well and it because it dries with a little bit of body. So, so it's going to work quite nicely. But that's it. That's all I'm going to do. Um, wipe off my palette knife. Pull it off and I'm left with some pretty dots on my tag. Um, going to wipe that off straight away so that it doesn't dry on the stencil. And as you can see, I'm working on my glass, Tim Holtz glass mat. Uh, I do love the glass mat because it is a heat proof surface as well as a surface that I can just wipe off and clean straight away. So um, I do, this is my clean spot on my desk. Um, I don't have any of the, the glass mats in stock at the moment. I do only order them in as customers request them simply because they are quite a bulky item to get in from the States. But the recommended retail on um, these, if anyone wants to order them, is around the $60 mark, depending on the Australian dollar and how, how bad um, that is at the moment with the American dollar. So um, I do like doing that. So I love that the uh, gesso is, is leaving dots. It's got a little bit of shape. It's not actually going to take too long to dry either, which is really cool. Um, I have not sealed my tag at all. So I haven't pre-gessoed my tag. I haven't done anything like that. But what I, and my tag does actually have like a bit of a green tinge to it, as you can see. So what I am going to do is I have chosen some magicals here which you can see in front of you. I've got um, a couple of blues. So I have Afternoon Delight Denim, Antique Bronze, Bratwurst Brown, and Time Travel Teal, um, along with this beautiful gold. So what I wanna do is add some color on with those next. So other than that being a little bit hot on the fingers, that is completely dry. Um, the white gesso, works wonderfully for running through stencils and that's what I've used it for today. So adding colour onto the background here, I'm wanting to, I'm going to start with my lightest colour, so I'm going to start with this brown and instead of doing the sprinkle and spritz technique that I did a couple of days ago, I'm going to use my glass mat as my palette and I'm going to puddle on some colours. So just popping on the Bratwurst Brown first and I might make up a little puddle here of the Antique Bronze. So the difference between these two browns, the Bratwurst Brown is a pink based brown, the Antique Bronze is a blue based brown. That's harder to say than it needs to be, but you get the picture. What I want to do is from here I can activate it and I've got these lovely little puddles of colour. 
So it's going on. The water's just activating it and making it all work in together. And then this one here is a little bit more of a blue based brown. But what I like about this is I have full control over how intense my color is going to be. So if I want this color here to be a little bit more intense, I can add some more powder to it. So the shakers have got a shaker side and they have got a scoopy side. Um, I never use the scoopy side. That is an accident waiting to happen. It's got a massive big hole there and the last thing I want to do is send a massive amount of colour onto my workspace. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to start puddling on the colour. I'm using quite a wet brush. Because I have got multiple, multiple surfaces underneath, I've got tissue paper which has got gel medium on top of it. This cardstock here is going to hold the colour differently. I just want to puddle my colour on just like that. The I'm going to work quite quickly. The more I procrastinate, the more that the colour is going to soak right in. And I want to be able to puddle and move that colour around a bit. So you can see that this Bratwurst Brown here is quite a more pink than this colour. The what's that? What was that one? Antique Bronze. Um, so just using a dirty brush now, so just I rinsed it into my little water well here and I'm just going to blend those together. So just adding that little touch of colour on the top. So I'm just going to lightly hit that with the heat tool just to, just to set it a little bit so it's not too puddly, if that's a word, puddly, puddling, puddly. too wet, we'll go with too wet. Um, and get that onto there, pick it up, move that around. I know, watching paint dry is so exciting, isn't it? Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I want to add a little bit of blue. So I have got the Afternoon Delight Denim. So I'm giving it a little shake first just to fluff it up because it has been sitting on my desk and the powder has settled. And then I have got some Time Travel Teal. So the Magical Shakers at the moment are on special for at 15% off. So I think they come back down to about, no, I don't do maths, I make pretty things. So I'm gonna say about from $8 down to about $6.80 each perhaps. Um, oh, look how beautiful. Can you see the shimmer that's sitting on the top of that color? Mm, shiny things. Um, okay, so <laughs> what I wanna do now is I'm going to puddle again, puddle on some more of this color. See, I know I'm gonna have a little element sitting about here and I'm gonna add some chipboard perhaps and some torn paper. So I'm starting off with this really, really intense blue. I've just rinsed my brush back to absolutely, well, dirty water. I was gonna say nothing, but it's dirty water. And then I'm just gonna puddle it again on the top like that. Um, I'm going to use some of this, oh, look at that, time travel teal. And layer some of that colour in as well. Yeah, Annette, that blue is absolutely beautiful. It is afternoon delight denim and it really is a nice denim blue. By itself, it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, so I do use that a lot. Um, and I actually prefer it over the Bavarian blue, which is the more bluer blue. So I've got some of the brown coming through in the bottom. I've got the, the navy blue sitting on the top here. And just by puddling on those colors, you can see that it's getting those beautiful, those beautiful layers of color coming through. I just noticed Julie's just said in the comments, windy and chilly on the Gold Coast. Well, it hasn't rained here yet in Adelaide today, but we have had so much rain in the last couple of days that you can just about see the farmers smiling from our place. Uh, my husband, who works in the grain industry, 
has said that the farmers are very, very happy and looking forward to a, a good crop, hopefully, this, this coming year. Um, just based on the last few days of, of soaking rain that we've had here. So, um, <laughs> could do with some afternoon delight. <gasps> Julie, really? But yeah, okay, I'm hearing you. Um, okay, so you can see that that colour has dried up and I've got a nice combination and you can still see that tissue paper coming up through. I've left some white bit here. Um, and I'm just going to add a little bit more of this, this beautiful teal. So using the shakers you don't always have to use them in the traditional way that you were probably first shown there's absolutely no reason why you can't create these little puddles of beautiful um, glistening shimmer on here um, so I'm just going to splatter it on because I find that if I'm going to put too much on with my brush then it can be a little bit unforgiving but just making that little bit more in blue and a little bit more intense there kind of pretty um, in a moment I'm going to add some gold to it um, just a small amount of gold just to give it a little bit of a pop this is one of the new colors that has just come out as a single pot of magicals by themselves so the difference between one of these guys and the shaker is the packaging the shakers actually have a little bit more in them and the original pots that they've had out for quite a while, they um, just have, have, I guess, less in it, but they work exactly the same way. So this color is Bayou Boogie Gold. Um, I'm going to use it exactly the same way as I have done here, but instead of using it as a sh shaking it onto here. I've got my little Nouveau spoon uh, and I'm just going to pop a small amount. Now I am talking a small amount, so a pea size, less than a pea size. These little Nouveau spoons are great. I've got quite a few of them on order coming in. I'm hoping that they will be in by Friday. So um, they will be in very shortly. Um, if you want to know what's coming in and want to know what sort of things I get in stock, the best way to do it is subscribe to my newsletter. If you jump onto my website, which is nataliemay.com.au, um, if you do an order through there, you automatically get added to my newsletter. But if you are a member or you've seen my blog where I put my, my tutorials and my bits and pieces to do with Lindy's Gang, which is happydax.blogspot.com, you can subscribe to my newsletter there. I'll put it in the link at the um, end of the video. Okay, so I've made up a nice little puddle of gold here and I want to splatter that on. I don't want to put too much on. I just want to add some splatters of gold. I'm covering up this section because I want to kind of keep that a little bit green. But this gold is sitting beautifully on top of those other lovely colours that I've put on. All right. So I'm just popping a little bit on the edges. And this is looking pretty cute. And I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so I'm thinking that I want to use some Tim Holtz Dead People, um, some of the Tim Holtz dolls uh, on my project. And I can see that my daughter Jessica May is watching. How are you, Jessica? Haven't seen you for a couple of hours. I'm assuming that you're sitting on your bed watching. Um, but, sorry, sidetracked easily. All right. So, I don't know if you can see. There is a beautiful shimmer going on with that background. So, I hope I didn't make that look hard. I guess the, the thing with the coloring like the puddling the color on is to use a paintbrush that is is going to really hold the liquid and puddle puddle the colors on um, I'm just going to wipe this off before I stick my hand in it because that's a thing let's get rid of that okay look at that shiny new and clean um, okay, so I've got some of these Tim Holtz dead people, or um, yes, Amanda, as they probably should be called, ancestors. 
but I love these. These are the paper dolls. There's packs of 107 pieces for only 10 bucks, and I've got a heap of them in stock, and they go from big, big people down to tiny, tiny little people. So um, I have chosen, pulled this one out of a packet, and I'm gonna sit her here. So with the Tim Holtz dolls, they need to be sitting on something. So I can't just have her sitting like that, otherwise she's kind of floating in the middle of nowhere. So I need to have her, I need to ground her. I need to make sure that she's grounded. I have found some book paper, no, music paper. And I'm just gonna tear, perfect, some elements of that and I'm gonna stick that there. In fact, I'm gonna grab a piece with some text on it as well and stick that there. Now, when I stick this on, um, I can use gel medium again, but I'm too lazy to do that. So I'm going to use my favorite glue. This is puzzle glue that was introduced to me by Olga from 13 Arts, from when Olga and Aida came over from Poland on their 13 Arts tour. And I fell in love with this glue and I have been ordering it in ever since. Um, it is absolutely awesome. It's got a lovely fine tip, which I have found hasn't clogged up and it, I think it retails for about eight bucks, but it's my go-to. All of my regular ladies who I miss terribly, by the way, um, I've got them totally addicted to it, but it is my, my go-to glue, my go-to adhesive. All right, so I'm going to stick that on there. So there's my little bit of a, uh, a white element. So she could be sitting on there, but that's still a bit boring. Um, I have got some dewdrop ink pad here I might just ink a little bit on the edges so I could use a blending brush but I'm going to use a um, blending sponge and I just want to darken up my edges with that so that will actually peel off quite nicely so edging it just gives it a little bit of depth and makes this bit here not stand out so much this is not traditionally a blending ink, so it's pretty permanent, um, but it does actually work quite nice. What else can I add to this? Um, I've got some embossing powder out. Lindy's got some new embossing powders, and these are chunky embossing powders. So this one here is Don't Scream Aquamarine. I might pop a little bit of that on. Um, I don't know if you can see any of these. So these are really, really cool. Um, chip off the old black chrome doesn't pay uh, I don't know if you can see how incredibly fabulous that shimmer is and it does look like a, like chrome on chipboard this stuff when you heat emboss chipboard um, mind-blowing uh, tin roof rusted I could have sung that from that awesome song but let's be honest no one needs to hear that um, that's marvelous so it does actually look like a marble bench top Chalk it up, that is a really lovely marble chalk sort of finish. Uh, of quartz it is, so that's got a pink tone to it. Groovy granite, that also looks like a granite bench top. Carefree verdigus, I can never say that, but that is just beautiful. And the last one, silence, is golden, which I've heard from my husband more than once. Um, so I reckon I might just pop a little bit of this Don't Scream Aquamarine on and I want to pop it, because I'm going to put her here, I might just pop a little bit up the side and put a little bit down here. So the way that I'm going to do that is I've just got a um, first cube. Now this is very possibly going to go bad. So this might just be the perfect way to show you how human I am. So I've just put a little bit on here, giving the embossing powder a shake, and I'm going to pop it on like so, and move it around with my finger. 
And I'm actually going to heat that from underneath because if I heat it on top, the power of the heat gun is going to blow it all off. But if I go up underneath, it's going to melt my embossing powder from below. So theoret once it catches and is smoking, whoops, there we go. I can get a little bit more heat. Couple of tips when you're heat embossing, make sure that your heat tool gets to temperature and then it will heat set a lot quicker. And you can see that that color, that, um, that embossing powder is just starting to catch and that looks freaking awesome. Okay, and I'm just gonna whack a little bit. Oh, what did I stick my finger in? glue. Hey, did you see that? I didn't swear. Yay me. And my glasses just hit the floor. Um, okay, so I'll do the same thing down the bottom just to give it a little bit of, little bit of interest. So I've just wet the area with the embossing powder and then I'm just going to use my finger to get it to grip. and then heat set it from underneath to get it to catch. So I love that these new embossing powders are chunky. They have got, ow, ow, ow. They have got lovely big and small pieces of powder in it, plus those beautiful flakes that you can see. There we go, it's just starting to catch. So now I can turn it over and heat set it from the top. Yeah, baby, look at that. Yeah. All right. So that's worked quite beautifully. So that is the Don't Scream Aquamarine embossing powder from Lindy. So all of these are also 15% off this weekend as well. And you can buy them in a set of five or as in single, like, individual colours. So um, then that way you, you know, you can... You can buy more than you need because we're crafters and that's what we do. All right, so she's gonna sit here. I still need something else here because that's boring the heck out of me. Um, I've got some of this Celebrate chipboard. This chipboard is absolutely lovely, lovely. And it's, it's got a really low, low price point as well. So um, $3.50 is not much at all. Um, this one here I found in my stash and I might use, might use this guy here and pop it on there. So if I find those scissors again and cut that off, and I'll separate that. Cause that's pretty. And that I'm going to stick onto there. So now she's going to be at least sitting on something. Yeah, that's pretty. But it's also pretty boring. So I might, I might give it a little bit of gold first. So again, I can get a thinner paintbrush. Now I can take it straight out of the lid. I can be really cheeky and just grab it straight out of the lid here and make up a nice little puddle and paint it straight on this way. Um, I do find it better than dipping my wet paintbrush into the pot, but if I do, I take it off onto like my glass mat, dip it into some water. It's not a dripping, soaking wet brush. It's just a damp, damp brush. So coloring that chipboard is gonna work good all right and then that won't take long to dry because it's not totally saturated it's just 
stamp. And I might add a little bit of brown to it as well because it's still quite, it's quite yellow. So I'm gonna add some Bratwurst Brown over the top and just give it, oh look at that, give it a little bit of depth of colour. So the cool thing about the Lindy's Magicals is that all of the shakers have a shimmer to them. So you are guaranteed to get a kick-ass shimmer every single time you use a shaker. With the little pots, these come in a huge range of colours, including flat colours as well. So they look pretty nice um, as a flat. So they're in super intense pigment dye based powder. So like I've been saying over the last couple of days, because they are a dye, they are permanent. So they will have a permanency to your project that a lot of other products just won't do um, and it's not going to reactivate again if I accidentally tip my glass of wine over it as if that would ever happen um, so the, the the magicals are fantastic for that sort of purpose um, I'm just using that espresso truffle ink pad on side where did you get your heat gun please Natalie okay so the heat gun that I was using is a Ranger heat gun it is um, I've got some on order but it has a European plug or American plug on it which means that you have to get it converted uh, I am more than happy if you want me to order one in for you you need to remember that it has to be converted to um, an Australian plug uh, or you need to use an adapter so I also just I've just looked at it and gone yeah it's nice I've got a bit of a once I staple this on which I'm going to use in a minute uh, I need to I might use a little bit of gauze so the other really cool thing about this uh, about Lindy's is that I can you I, you can you can dye fabric and ribbon and um, calico and gauze so I want to mutilate that I want to use um, a little bit of gauze and have her sitting on something cushioned something soft it needs a little bit of a soft element to it so I want to cluster that up there I want to color it first so again maybe we'll add a little bit of time travel teal although that's going to be super bright but hey what have I got to lose um, I'm going to wet my gauze first and I'm going to do it this way and add a little bit of color look at that magic and now it is So that, the reason I did it between my hands, other than the fact that now I've got Smurf hands, um, the reason I did it that way is because if I was to put it in here, it's going to be way too intense and way too dark. And I don't want it super dark. Um, it's actually going to take longer for me to untangle this. Okay, hang on. Let's just hit it with the heat gun and dry it off a little bit. Do I sell the gauze, Natalie? No, go to a chemist and buy some from the first aid section. Um, that is the best thing to do. It's super inexpensive and really, really um, easily accessible. Um, if you know somebody who works in a hospital, you could get them to, I won't say pinch it for you, but you know what I mean. Um, just looking for something to wipe that up all right stop fluffing around here okay so now I've got this little hot mess of colored gauze um, and I'm going to yep yeah, perfect all right let's commit to this so how do I stick this on I use a stapler so I have my Tim Holtz tiny attacher it is my 
favorite tool to use and I love it because I use it as an embellishment as well. I make sure that you can see my staples. Um, I'm waiting for a whole heap of stock to come in. As everyone knows at the moment, the postage, postage system in Australia is, for lack of a better term, crap. Um, so it's, sorry, I'm just reading the comments there. Um, so it's really, really hard to um, guarantee that something's gonna be on my website in a day or so. But I have ordered in a whole heap of things, including the tiny attaches. And that really could have been that darker blue, couldn't it? Um, but yeah, so you will need to keep an eye out on the website for that. So yes, that could have been a darker blue because it really does stand out just that little bit too much. So the way to fix that is I'm going to add a little bit of blue to it. I know, right? Look at that. So I've just made up a little puddle of that afternoon delight denim and I'm just going to lightly, I don't want to saturate it, otherwise it's going to take too long to dry. But that's better. Yeah, baby. All right. Dun, dun, dun. Love how far, well, the tiny attacher, the reach isn't as good as I would like it to be. The when I'm working on a project like this, it only goes in that two inches. That's a, two inches? Eh, one and a half inches. So um, that's far enough for this project. I do have a long arm stapler that I use a lot. Uh, I do find that works better on scrapbook pages and art journal pages, but the tiny attacher will do what it needs to do. Okay, so now she is sitting here. Great, but she's boring. So I've got some wings. So a couple of nights ago, I got in the Tim Holtz transparent wings. So I these have got a whole heap of wings in them. They're quite a low cost. They are up on the website. Um, the reason I've got tape over the top here is that they've got these super tiny, fine little wings in there, but it, they come out of the hole, the hang cell hole in the top. So I decided to cover that up. Um, so what I want to do is I want to stick some wings behind her. No, don't like that one. That's too green. That's too boring. Mm, that could work. That's better. Let's go big. Oh, hang on. Or maybe she could do with a pop of orange. What do you reckon, people? Orange or... Or the blue with yellow. What do you reckon? What's the vote? Come on, someone vote. Give me something. I can't decide. What's the vote, people? What's the vote? Orange, Annette. Orange, Amanda. All right. Thanks, girls. This is your name. All right. So... Um, what do I do? I'm going to, oh, hey, Alison Bevis. I see you. Okay, I'm going to stick those there. But I want to stick those down with, I want to give it a little bit of dimension underneath. And I've just thought about that now. So just chat amongst yourselves. I'm back sorry okay so I want to give it a little bit of dimension underneath her and I want to cut them up a bit so I'm going to snip them up the middle and I'm going to use the silicon tape um, has everyone seen this stuff this stuff is awesome so it's foam tape but it is clear so it's not not foam, it's like silicon. 
So it is super sticky. Um, and I'm just showing you all how clumsy I am. But as you can see how sticky it is, I'm about to make this look really hard. By the way, here we go. But, and it's got a bit of stretch to it as well. But I like it because it is transparent and it is sticky. Haven't seen that tape. No, you guys, oh my God, it is so sticky. Um, I sell it by the roll, look in under adhesives. Um, but on mixed media projects, this is my go-to instead of using foam tape um, because it's super sticky. All right, wings on. And it's not, it's not expensive either. Oh, hang on, where are they gonna go? They need to sit there, okay. So now, the reason I wanted to use the foam, foam tape is because I wanted it to have a little bit of a lift underneath it. I wanted it to have a really small amount of lift and to have that little bit of a shadow that it's gonna give. So you can see that that tape is clear. It's, I don't know how many millimeters, but it's, um, it's enough. You have to excuse the state of my fingernails. First world COVID problems. Can't get a freaking manicure. Um, okay. Moving on. Um, I'm going to pop those. Oh, see, and you can't, once you commit to it, you've got to commit to this tape. It's epic sticky. All right, let's just stick it down, stuff it. All right, so she's going to sit there. She's got her cute little wings on. Um, I might actually give it a little bit more of a pop. Um, it's got the red back on it, this tape, so it's pretty... Oh, freaking... So I keep the tape on the roll because I don't want to... It's like all of those wonder tapes, all of those red tapes. It's an absolute nightmare to peel the red off, but it sticks like... Shit, you know what I mean. Um, Amanda, I know, right, my nails are short. Yeah, total first world girl problems, but... Anyway. Um, so I'm going to pop that on the back there like so. Grab another bit. I'm going to pop that there like so. It's so sticky that it only needs those two little pieces. Um, sorry, my dogs have decided to start doing zoomies in the backyard and they are going absolutely crazy and barking outside. Um, right. dun, dun, dun. Yeah, squish. Okay, so we're on the right track there. I'm gonna keep it simple here and I'm going, going to add some sort of wording. Um, so I've got snarky small talk. So I think she needs some sort of fabulous little comment here. Um, so I'm fairly certain I've got these in, in stock at the moment. Um, yeah, I know everyone's going to be totally lining up for manicures, aren't they? I just <laughs> reading your comments as they're coming up. Total first world problems. Um, I'm so glad this is a um, live Facebook of my hand and not my hair because that's a serious amount of tinsel coming out of the top of my head. Um, all right, so stop overthinking this. Okay, <laughs> I'm allergic to stupidity. I break out in sarcasm story of my life okay so I'm going to snip that off like so because it's too long and I'm going to snip off that side and snip that off there as well and I think that it has to overlap on her so normally I cover up their eyes because I don't know why the Tim Holtz Dolls just creep me out, but I don't know about putting it over her eyes, so I'm just going to overlap it onto her body, 
a little and I haven't got fingernails to do this oh my god the first model problem underneath that to give it a bit of height and we are good to go all right so I'm kind of um, liking where this is going it is quick and simple for me I would normally take a little bit more time and effort but you know it's Sunday you guys have got better things to do than watch me waffle on here um, so just yeah going touching base again we have I've just used a plain tag in the background um, one of the uh, a stencil just a plain everyday beautiful dot stencil in the background with the 13 arts gesso and gesso it's like a heavy gesso so it's given me that that lovely texture on here um, the and that took no time to dry as well because it's a really nice gesso I then used the Lindy's Gang Magicals in Bratwurst Brown and dun, 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 Antique Bronze on the background with the addition of Afternoon Delight Denim with a small amount of Time Travel Teal and Bayou Boogie Gold. I gave it a little shimmer in the background here using the new embossing powders from Lindy. So this one is Don't Scream Aquamarine and it is absolutely gorgeous so on white you can see that it's got beautiful tones of copper and navy and aquamarine in it they are absolutely beautiful um, I used some of the Celebr Celebrate chipboard as well so that is really really nice um, and we colored that with gold and in brown and I also used the Tim Holtz tissue in the background as well so lots of little collaging elements um the dolls so the tim holtz dead people i have got packs of those these are currently under recommended retail so these have actually been on special for a while because i had a huge amount of them in stock so they're only 10 bucks for 107 pieces um, and these will last you a really freaking long time and then our beautiful butterfly wings on here, the transparent Tim, transparent Tim Holtz wings are really, really lovely. So there's 72 pieces in that kit. No idea how much they are, can't remember. Absolutely useless like that. And followed by the snarky small talk Tim Holtz ideology letters. So I'm gonna take a photo of this and I'll pop this up online in a moment. Um, I'm just going to finish off this little bit here uh, off camera and uh, other than that I hope you're all staying safe jump online nataliemay.com.au and I will be posting tomorrow I did a post yesterday of orders and I did a post on Friday so hopefully um, all your orders should be out to you sooner rather than later and um, yeah Stay safe, guys. Chat soon.